If gold is uh, $2,000 an ounce and it goes to $3,000 an ounce, what's the percentage increase? 50%. 50%. It's 50%. Because yeah. about 1,000. Okay. So if gold goes from $2,000 an ounce to $3,000 an ounce, that's a 50% gain. But if gold is $14,000 an ounce and it goes to $15,000 an ounce, that's a 7.1% gain. Yeah. No, it's still a thousand bucks, right? It's it's real money. It's a thousand bucks to you, the, the, the owner cool. or the holder. But as you get to higher levels, the percentage increase drops yeah. because yeah. you're working off a larger denominator. Yep. So everyone's like $15,000. What they don't understand is the last $5,000 will go happen in the blink of an eye because it's, it's, to go from 14 to 15, that's a 7% gain. That's one week's worth of volatility. Yes. You're going to start to see $100 days routinely. You almost do today. You're going to start to see $1,000 a month routinely. Because at each level, the thousand, bu- same thousand bucks, you still get the money. But the thousand bucks is a smaller percentage of the then existing base. So you're going to go from 10 to 11 to 12 to 13 to 14, just like that, maybe a year or less. Uh, now it's it. Those are bigger gains today. A thousand dollars today is a fifty percent increase. But then when you get to three thousand, another thousand dollar gain is only a thirty three percent increase. Exactly. And at yeah. that point, it's only a twenty five, et cetera, until it gets until it becomes trivial, uh, or at least small relative to daily volatility. So, so get your gold now before that before that happens. Because if you're waiting for the, well, I'm going to wait till it gets to eight thousand dollars, nine thousand dollars, you're going to miss out. First of all, you will have missed out on the on the early gains, but you you're in danger of missing out on the late gains because because it, it's sort of like the hockey stick that a lot of the gains in these bull markets happen at the end. All the more reason to get in at the early stage because you need less money to do it. What would you say to people out there that say, uh, "Well, Jim, that's all well and good, but right now <clears throat> the funny money is not just going to go into gold. We've also got all this digital, and the world is going digital." Whether we like it or not, governments are going digital. Every everything's going digital. Well, what would you say to those people that say, "Well, actually, uh, Bitcoin and some of the cryptocurrencies are going to suck in some of the money that would normally go into potentially a, a gold market"? Does that affect I, it that in any way, or it's irrelevant? Yeah, well, it's it's sort of a sideshow. I mean, the market cap of Bitcoin, it's getting, I guess it's getting back to the $20,000 level or we're close to it, uh, which, pardon, which was the all-time high in uh, January, early January 2018. Um, there has been zero net wealth creation as the result of Bitcoin. What you have are wealth transfers. So basically, I have have friends, good friends who they bought their Bitcoin at well below $1,000 an ounce. It went to 20. They sold it kind of at the 18, 19 level, paid their taxes, and they're extremely wealthy. They've been traveling around the world ever since. Uh, Those people are real. They're out there. There There are Bitcoin billionaires. But what about the South Korean garage owner who hocked his inventory? to buy Bitcoin at $17,000 an ounce, saw it wiped out and committed suicide. Mm. In other words, what's happen- what happens with Bitcoin? There's no, it's not like, like Microsoft, like Bill Gates is worth whatever, $100 billion, probably more. Um, but he created value. He created more value. He got his share, but he created far more value than he took uh, for the rest of us because we get to use all the software uh, is added to productivity, et cetera. So I don't care if people are worth 100 billion if they created you yeah. know, 100 times more. But Bitcoin, there's no wealth creation. If people got rich, they took it from other people. So yeah. if if that, if that if that lets you rest easy and sleep at night, you know, fine. I'm not one of them. But uh, but there's no value added in Bitcoin. Is the answer. But crypto is different um, uh, because we're we're seeing the rise of crypto central bank currencies. And you can see, I said this years ago, and you can, you can see it coming. The, the central banks, they didn't understand cryptocurrencies, if those joke, et cetera. But you have to distinguish between the blockchain, which is the technology, and the token, which could be Bitcoin or Ethereum or, or any of the others. But now, pretty soon, the, t- the token is going to be the euro, the Aussie dollar, the US dollar, et cetera. Blockchain is just, it's just a ledger. Absolutely. I mean, you think of... Think of Bob Cratchit and uh, Charles Dickens, you know, he was sitting there writing the ledger by hand. This is just a digitized ledger, which is different in the sense that the entire history of all the Bitcoin trans, or I'll say Bitcoin, but whatever ledger it is, Bitcoin, Euro, whatever, the entire history of all the transactions is carried forward into the next transaction, 
and the one after that and the one after that. That's why they call it the block chain because it's always a block and it has a chain of all the transactions back to day one. That's a lot of writing for, for Bob Cratchit, but it's not too much for a computer. Uh, and the message traffic is encrypted. So it's a cryptocurrency. So you have you have the anonymity. So it's a good ledger system and it's not limited to, to money. Um, could be a property title, uh, stocks, bonds, uh, um, bills of lading, it's used in trade networks, etc. It has a lot of good uses. By the way, it's been around since the 80s. Nothing really new about it. Um, so it's been Jim, linked to- Jim, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we are running out of time. I, uh, my next speaker- Time flies. Week, I know, I know. You know, I should have had you on for two hours. It's only- <laughs> a, 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 And we did start a fraction early. So um, what I'd like to do is I would love to hear your final views. We've got nearly a thousand people listening to you today. There'll be a lot mm -hmm. more that, li that listen post uh, today's conference. Mm -hmm. What would you say to those people that have come onto this virtual gold conference to listen to Jim Rickards and what his views are on how they can protect and grow their wealth? Three things that you would do in this current crazy world, apart from the first two are <laughs> go buy currency wars and then go buy the new Great Depression. What's well, the third one? Well, buy, yeah, buy the, do buy the new Great Depression because everything we talked about is in that book with, with a lot more detail and a lot of end notes. So, uh, so that's good. So I would say uh, be prepared for slow growth at best and a recession, highly likely in early 2021, a back-to-back -back recession. That's going to be that's going to be a major headwind for stocks. Um, and so, number one, I'd kind of lighten up on equity, not zero, but you know, I'd lighten up. I would increase my allocations to cash because uh, it, ha it has a low yield, yes. But first of all, it's a great asset in deflation, which we may experience. But cash has, first of all, it reduces the volatility. Cash is the opposite of leverage. Leverage increases the volatility of your portfolio. But if you have stocks and gold and other volatile assets, a slug of cash in the middle will reduce the volatility. You have to sleep at night. But cash has enormous embedded optionality. There's so much uncertainty in the world. Uh, I, I do forecasting, you know, kind of for a living, and we can see some of these things, but I'll be the first to admit there's a lot of uncertainty. So you might pivot in the direction of deflation, all of a sudden, boom, here's the inflation. Okay, so, but the person with cash can pivot back. The person who's going all in on certain assets, you know, try getting your money back from Henry Kravis, you know, ahead of schedule. You can't. So, so have some cash, don't lock in, uh, give yourself that optionality. And third, by all means, have a significant allocation of hard assets, gold first and foremost, uh, but property will do well. By the way, not commercial real estate in cities, that's gonna do horribly. And I'm on, I, I know a lot of people in the commercial real estate business, I'm on some boards, it's gonna do horribly. But residential real estate in, you know, including multifamily housing developments in suburbs, people, uh, I'm not sh quite sure what's going on in Australia, but in the United States, we have an exodus from the city. Cities are the greatest. Pretty much the same here, Jim. Yeah, cities are the greatest wealth creation mechanisms in the history of civilization. And if we're depopulating our cities, we're destroying our wealth engine. But it's very good for suburban real estate developers because people are just moving out. They're fed up with everything we see. So I would say um, d diversification. Real you know, People, they buy 30 stocks and they go, I'm diversified. I'm like, no, you're not. You're in one asset class called stocks. Real diversification. I have some stocks, some bonds, you know, high quality government notes, gold, cash, uh, alternatives, real estate. That's real diversification, number one. Have a big slug of cash, give yourself some optionality, and by all means, have some gold.